This is the Healing Roots Podcast, where you will learn to heal yourself, break generational cycles, dispel societal norms, heal ancestral lines, tune yourself to emotional alignment, and live a happy, healthy, and holistic lifestyle without losing your culture. Hello. And welcome to the Healing Roots Podcast. This is your host, Lauren. And today we will be talking about self-limiting beliefs and how to raise your vibration to manifest what you want. Today, I wanted to bring this up because I was actually at my mother's house this past weekend and she had some friends come over and we were speaking about, you know, certain things. And that's what actually inspired me to do the past episode about working with your ancestors. It was just so interesting to meet the top tier of my generation. They were actually very much in tuned, but also very scared of the idea of stepping away from our cultural norms. And that made me think about the type of limiting beliefs that we grow up in, that we learn about from society, from our friends, from our mothers, fathers, and other family members, and how that affects us going after our dreams, how that affects us going out into the world and getting what we want, how that affects us in our everyday lives, doing what we want to do, just afraid of who would say what, and who would judge us. And even in the back of our minds, when we think we don't care, we're still subconsciously thinking that we do. And so today I'm just going to adventure into a little bit of shadow work, just a thought that I think you guys would love to honestly turn the mirror inside and get an idea of what your self-limiting beliefs are. Self-limiting beliefs are (laughs) pretty much, if it's not already obvious, is these are beliefs that we hold within our psyche. They degrade us. They tear us down. They suck our life. They suck our imagination. They suck our energy dry. And they make us believe that we are not capable that we are not worthy of whatever. They make us feel as though we just don't have enough. I mean, there are so many self-limiting beliefs. There are so many people out there right now that don't believe that they deserve love, that don't believe that they are worthy enough for success. They are worthy enough to have the things that make them happy. There are so many who don't believe that they are worthy enough just to be happy, just to be loved and be loved well. Today, I'm going to show you how to throw all of those beliefs in the garbage. Yes. Welcome to the Healing Roots Podcast, where we heal those roots and we throw out the garbage. Okay. I did this recently, honestly, like for pretty much all of 2019, your girl been working on her self learning beliefs, her terrible self-talk, like all the juicy juice that's been holding me back from becoming, I mean, me, of course. You want to be the best you that you can possibly be. And how can you be that if there's a little bitch in your head being an asshole all the time? I kick that bitch out. I have a vacancy and I have a new tenant, okay? My new tenant is the bomb. She be telling me everything that I need to do all the time, how I need to do it, how I'm doing all my good things all the time, feeling good about myself, okay? Like, she like, girl, did you not put the eyebrow on good today? Like, yesterday was good, but today... Today, them lines is straight, girl. You're looking like those your eyebrows. They just grow on just so perfect, y'all. I can't do makeup. So this is something for real, for real. Like, this is something that I really need to tell myself. You know, just telling yourself, like, you're beautiful. Congratulating yourself on the things that you do and not just thinking that they're mundane. Telling you that you are worthy of being successful, that you are worthy of being loved. You know what I mean? Like congratulating yourself, like, girl, you did that. You got out the bed this morning. You cooked breakfast. You got your kid ready. You took her to daycare or to the babysitter and you drove all the way back home to sit down and get your work done or to go all the way to work and work your shift all day. 
still come home, pick up your kids, clean up, cook dinner, and you still got to have a little bit of time to work on your passion before you hit the sack tonight and wake up and do it again tomorrow? Like, you can't tell me that you are not doing the damn thing. You can't tell me that you are not making things happen. I'm just saying, like, y'all out here, whoever is listening, woman, man, if you in the in-between, whoever you are, you better give yourself congratulations because you are powerful. You are empowered. People look at you and they are inspired by what you have come through, where you are, and how you can take it to the next level. And you need to be able to see the greatness in you that other people see. So today, I'm going to show you how to throw the garbage in the trash so that you can see the light. Because sometimes y'all be over here be hoarding these negative self-limiting thoughts, okay? And y'all be like the people in hoarders who got decent house, all the windows just piled up with junk. So much trash everywhere. We about to do spring cleaning on your brain, okay? We need to get rid of all that trash, all that junk, all the self-limiting thoughts that your friends be doing, that you be taking into your head, all the bullying from when you was a kid. We throwing that in the trash. We don't need that no more. We don't need any of those thoughts in our head anymore. And today, today, y'all. Oh, I'm so lit. Y'all, y'all don't, y'all don't know. Like, I'm feeling myself right now. Like, today's the day, okay? So... Number one, okay, so we know what self-limiting beliefs are, right? But the first thing that you have to do with self-limiting beliefs is you have to identify them. And there's this quote, I don't want to lie, but I'm pretty sure it was said by Oprah. And basically, she said that the more you call the negativity out by name, it will disappear because you have taken away its power. Honestly, y'all need to take notes on this one, okay? So sometimes we just have that downtime where we're not actively thinking about a project. We're not actively doing something specific. We just have that downtime in our brain. And a lot of the times, what are we doing? We're scrolling Instagram, Twitter. If you're a business person, you on LinkedIn. Other people, they watching TikTok. They on YouTube, watching videos. You watching Hulu, Netflix. Whatever it is that you do in your off time, pay attention to those thoughts. Even if you're doing nothing and you're just sitting, Sometimes you can just hear those little thoughts, those little repetitions just going and going in your brain. And you have to be able to call it out. Like, for example, if you're trying to lose weight, right? And you know that you're trying to lose weight because of why? Because you're fat, right? Well, guess what? The fact that that is a self-limiting belief. You're saying that you're fat. Possibly if you're fat, then you're unattractive, right? Because those are two thoughts that usually run together. Now you're unhealthy because you want to be more fit. You want to be more attractive. You want to see yourself differently than you see because there's something wrong with who you are right now. That entire thought loop right there is a self-limiting belief. You have a village of self-limiting beliefs that stem from each other. So you may have a belief that you feel unworthy of having happiness. So you continue to eat so that you can fill those voids. And because you're filling those voids with food, now you're unhealthy. So you have those thoughts of being unhealthy. Now you're fat. So now you have those thoughts of being fat and unattractive and blah, 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 and blah, 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 and blah, 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 right? So with these things, you have to stop the thought process. If you want to be healthy, claim that you are healthy. I am healthy. Speak it as if it exists and you make an action toward it. And so when you claim and you make an action, there's going to be that little voice that's like, oh, so <laughs> you think that you're going to lose weight. You really think that? Like you're fat. And we know you're having a salad today, but tomorrow we're going to ride past Krispy Kreme and we're going to have some donuts and we'll just be right back and there won't be any more salads, you know, because that there's a jerk in your head that's like, da, 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 da. it's like the girl from Mean Girls, but she's hungry or, you know, whatever it is that your self-limiting belief is. And so honestly, when you have those specific things that are going on, what you would do is talk back and you would be like, I'm having this salad. I'm doing something good. I am healthy. And then the next time that you roll past Krispy Kreme, instead of getting a dozen, maybe you get one. 
and that is all you get. My thing is, it's okay to have something here and there, but you need to be able to have some type of self-constraint. And when you're able to constrain yourself and be able to say, I am going to do A, B, and C. And if I have a craving, like if you say, okay, I'm going to eat eggs and protein and a smoothie or some type of carb, then that was a kind of decent breakfast. Maybe, you know, before that you had some lemon water to activate your digestive system. And so now at lunch, you have the largest salad that looks like you can't finish it. You eat that. And then dinner, you have like a decent sized meal that you won't be hungry at night, right? So maybe right after you eat lunch, you're like, I want some chocolate. What you would do is have that specific taste. Go out and purchase one of whatever it is. Don't mess yourself up and buy a package because it's cheaper. One cookie, one brownie, one ice cream, and buy the smallest one. Because the only thing that you need to do is satisfy the taste. You don't need to overindulge when you're trying to, especially self-imaging beliefs, especially when it comes to weight loss, you have to be able to congratulate yourself because you're creating new patterns. And that's what I'm going to teach you today is when you have self-limiting beliefs, what those self-limiting beliefs are attached to habit patterns that you have consistently fed over the course of your lifetime up until this point. And so basically what I'm going to teach you to do is cut those habits and then move forward to create new ones. And the first thing that you do is you associate that good habit with a reward because your self-limiting belief gets a reward of doing something. Like when you feel terrible, you might go eat, you might go drink, you might smoke weed, you might do something that is self-gratifying to make yourself feel better after hearing all those thoughts all day or having the compoundedness of those thoughts plus the stress of your day. Well, Think about switching those things around. Like, for example, if you want to work out more every day that you get up, put on your clothes, have all your clothes set out or go to sleep in your workout clothes. So when you wake up in the morning, you don't have an excuse. Just get up and go. And when you get up and you go walk for however time and then when you come home, eat. You know what I'm saying? You have to energize yourself. But what I'm saying is like after you work out, give yourself a reward. If you like watching a certain specific thing, do that. Or if you like to eat a specific thing in the morning, like if you love smoothies or if you love chocolate, make yourself a chocolate shake. Make yourself something that actually tastes good, y'all. Do something that's good. Like if you like chicken, cheese, biscuit, and you don't eat a lot of carbs, but today you went to work out. So this is something that you need when you're creating a habit. You first do something that makes you uncomfortable. Do something that you would like to do to move forward to a goal, but it's not something that you would normally do. It's out of your norm. So what you have to do is do it and then self-gratify with something that you know. So if there's something you specifically love to do, do it. Sometimes you're not able to immediately do it. You might have to do it later on in the day, but those things, you have to reward yourself. And if you're not rewarding yourself, the habit will not stick. And so you have to keep doing it every single time. For me, I'll give you an example. I do my best to wake up a little bit earlier in the morning so that I can cook breakfast for my partner and my daughter before we get our day started. And it takes a lot for me to get up maybe two hours ahead of everybody so I can have a little bit of time to myself before I get to the dog and the breakfast and everything. And so waking up that early is a lot. And then I congratulate myself in the morning by as soon as I get up, I put water in my steamer and I make myself a tea. I usually do like mint tea and lavender or more recently I've been doing roasted dandelion. And so it pretty much, it tastes like coffee to me. So like, I don't really like coffee, but I like Damiana because it's not full of caffeine. It doesn't give me the jitters, but I do get a lot of energy. And on top of that, Damiana is freaking amazing for the liver. I have that every morning. And what that does, it makes me feel good. It gives me a feel good feeling because I do love tea. 
also I like the fact that I get to make something kind of frothy like as if I went to Starbucks I put like coconut milk in it and give myself some sugar I make it just like coffee y'all I make it just like coffee but without like the artificial sweetener because coconut milk is like super sweet. And then I put like a couple teaspoons of like raw sugar or maple syrup or honey in there. And I put it in the blender so it's like super frothy. And then I pour it in my specific tea cup because I have one of those because I like tea. <laughs> and I drink it and it's like, ah, oh, like I just feel like, ah. Oh. Like it, it settles me and it wakes my body up. It's like, hey baby, let's get functioning. Like, and it helps me feel good all day. That's what I feel like. That is my reward to myself for getting up in the morning or not sleeping in. And then once I've kind of like gotten everything in, I drop my daughter off. And when I drop my daughter off on time for lunch, I might go out and do something for myself or I might come home and cook one of my favorite comfort meals before I get my actual work done for that day or, you know, start cleaning up the house or whatever it is. What that does is that redirects all of my self-limiting beliefs that I'm lazy, that I can't get anything done, that I'm not worthy of being in a home that makes me feel good, that's bright, that's airy, that's clean. These are things that I needed to get better at. Also, the fact that I am a very oriented person. I need things done as I need them to get done. I've been trying to be really flexible with myself because I will plan things super far ahead of time and I will have them timed out. And when things run over time, like right now I'm recording podcasts and I was supposed to get started maybe like two hours ago, but I had some things come up. And so I actually had to push back my planning time, which made me push back my podcast time. So so obviously when I wrap this podcast up, it's going to be a little bit less of what I thought it would be. But I have to be able to be like, okay, that's okay. As long as I'm able to create this, you know, I just set a new goal. And then after I do that, I will reward myself. So tonight I might watch anime because I love anime, y'all. Like anime is like my thing. And I know I'm a grown adult, but honestly, if you're in the anime, you know why. But if you're not in the anime, anime is like an animated show of what you normally watch on TV, basically. Like, but it's usually fantasy. I love fantasy. Like, I love it. I love the, um, I'm gonna get off this topic in a second, but I love the re another world. Anybody who knows about that series is like, there's like a kid or a, an adult, depending on which show you watch. And like, they have some tragic accident or they step into some type of summoning circle in the real world and they get sucked into an alternate world that is actually a fantasy world where they could like do magic and have like fantasy creatures and stuff. And I just think that is like so cool because honestly and truthfully y'all, I don't watch no show that I could literally see myself doing in real life. Like honestly and truthfully, I just don't see the point like Y'all, I went to school for film and like TV to me is escapism. I'm here to escape my life. I don't want to see nothing that is my life. You know what I'm saying? Like I don't be wanting to watch power. I'll be watching power sometimes, but I just can't get into it like other people because I'm very into fantasy. And I like it because honestly, like how weird I am, like I see the frivolousness, the materialism in a lot of these shows, especially like the shows that are reality TV shows. Honestly, a lot of that stuff is scripted. A lot of that stuff is played off of by the producers. And I personally, I just can't watch that amount of negativity because I'm like super empathic. And then all that energy gets onto me. I start feeling down. I start feeling yucky. I start acting weird. And so I personally just completely cut all of that super negative stuff out of my life. Like I occasionally watch horror films and horror shows because I freaking love horror, but I still don't do that on a regular basis as much as I used to. And that's just simply because like, I want to keep my energy up. I'm doing a lot of things. I'm exerting a lot of energy on a continuous basis. And I don't want to be inputting negative things when I could be inputting positive things. And so when I'm doing something that I need to do, I always 
give myself a reward because at the end of the day, I'm doing something that I wouldn't normally do. And so I'm trying to continually create habits and create habit structures that will continue me doing the things that I want to do. And one of them is recording this podcast. And when I record the podcast, I always follow it up by watching an anime episode because what that does for me is it solidifies my circle. When I think about a podcast, I get great ideas. It feels really good. And I automatically feel the joy that I would feel when I watch anime, when I think about my podcast. So I immediately am on it. And I'm like, the next time I'm part of my podcast, I'm going to do it at this time, blah, blah, blah. And I make it happen. And when I do it, I watch an episode so that time loop continues. And if you guys want to learn more about habits, there is a book. I'm going to link it down below. So check the show notes so you guys can see the name of that book. But it's amazing. He talks about a bunch of studies that were done. And so basically it's this monkey that they have, right? And the monkey comes into a room. And so basically when the monkey gets the shapes and the colors right, he pulls on the lever. So like if they say a circle and then a circle points on the screen, he'll pull the lever. But if he pulls the lever when there's a square, he won't get a treat. If he gets the correct assumption and he pulls the lever, then there's like grape juice, comes out into the straw so he gets grape juice and then when he pulls the wrong one he doesn't get anything so now every time that he sees the correct thing he pulls the lever he automatically when he sees it he tastes the joy of the grape juice before he pulls the lever before he even makes an action the thought the sight of it and like it automatically triggers his response. So he will get a dopamine response of the reward before he even takes the action. So once he takes the action, he already knows what the reward will be. And so it continues a psych loop. If you give the reward, then the next time when you see it, you'll feel what the reward will feel like and then you'll do it and then you'll actually get the reward. That's an addiction loop. And so what you want to do is you want to create these habitual habits And you want to create them in such a way that your brain, that your body is like, well, I can get A, B, and C. I can get this amount of gratification if I do A, B, and C today. When I schedule it, I'm making sure that I'm able to create those habit loops. Now we're going to circle back. So imagine when you're saying, I'm not worthy of love. So you sabotage your relationships, right? And when you're sabotaging your relationships, you're actually hurting other people. But the reason that you feel that you need to push them away is because you feel like you're going to hurt them, but you're hurting them. Honestly, when you are doing stuff like that, you have to think inside of your head and you have to think, hmm, why am I doing this? And they'd be like, well, because I feel like she's too close. Why do you feel like she's too close? Or, you know, why do you feel like he's too close? Because I don't feel like I want to be loved that way. Why don't you want to be loved that way? And then it's like, well, I don't want to be loved that way because I don't feel like I deserve that kind of love. Well, why don't you feel like you deserve that kind of love? Because blah, blah, blah. And what that does is when you use the why is what I like to call it, like the why questioning. And a lot of people on YouTube will talk about this is that when you do the why, you're able to kind of like sink down and further and further and further until there is nothing else that you can say why about. You have reached the root cause. And at that point, you're able to give it a name. If you get down to why, and then I feel unworthy of love. And then why do you feel unworthy of love? And you might think of a thought of maybe like when you were a kid and you were trying to show, let's say like your mom or your dad love and your parents may not felt worthy of love and they may have pushed you away or they may not have given you hugs and kisses like that. They may not have been the type of person to do things like that. And so if that's what made you feel like you're unworthy of love or just, you know, verbal abuse throughout your childhood, those things can make you feel unworthy of a lot of things. And so then those things become embedded into your subconscious and your actual actions in the world project those subconscious thoughts. And that's where you really want to do the work. Now, what I'm saying is that once you have identified your self-limiting belief, 
And also sabotage. Self-sabotage is a self-limiting belief. And I want you guys to, you know, look into that because a lot of people are invested in self-sabotage. Like they'll get a job, they'll love that job, and then they'll just quit out the blue. Don't even have nothing else lined up. Just had yourself sitting out in the cold because they felt like ABC. You have to look at your actions and see why did you do that? Did you did you sabotage yourself? Are you taking responsibility for that? And then you need to acknowledge it because the next time that you have that same feeling that you felt like when you wanted to quit that job or when you really wanted to go binge eat a bunch of food and then the next day you didn't hop back on the bandwagon of that diet that you said you were gonna follow through on. Instead, you just kept binge eating what you're doing is you're self-sabotaging yourself to go back to how things used to be. And you yourself don't want things to go back that way, but your subconscious internal habit loop wants to go back to how things used to be because that's how it keeps you safe. That's how it keeps you alive. But you have to teach your brain, hey, there's another way to do this. There's another way to keep me alive. There's another way to keep me unstressed. And I want to do it this way. And you have to teach the brain how it knows. The brain does something and gets a reward and feels safe. And so you have to do the same thing. You have to create a habit loop and you have to sustain that habit loop over a certain period of time before it forms an actual concrete loop in your brain where it cannot just be wiped away when you slip up then all you would have to do is activate that loop again. The problem is that your previous loops are also still there. So when you activate those, they will cause that habit loop. But what you have to do is quickly break that chain. How I can explain this is, for example, I am a avid binge eater. I don't know. I eat for everything. I eat happy. I eat sad. I eat emotions. I eat bored. In order to break that habit loop, what I would do is I would be like, okay, I can eat as much as I want to eat up until this time. And then after this time, the only thing I can have is tea and water. And that's what I would do. And in order to help me break those habit loops of like binge eating, I would only limit myself to a snack, a snack, one snack between each meal. And so if I decide that I want to have, let's say like apples and peanut butter, whatever I initially make, like if I cut up two apples, those are the only two apples I can have until my next meal. It helps me gauge myself. You know, how hungry am I and how much do I need to eat to get to the next meal without feeling groggy? And then being able to actually eat that food and not eat anything else to my next meal. If in fact it wasn't enough, then I know the next time that I have a snack, I know that I need a little bit more, but I'm not going to eat anymore until that next meal. Does that make sense? So this is the only little thing that I'm going to make myself and I'm not going to make a lot. I'm just going to make enough to feel satiated that can last me about two hours because I eat about every three hours. So if it could last me two hours, that's straight. I'm good with that. And then what I would do is I would eat that amount and then that last hour drink water because of course I'm gonna start getting hungry. But that gives me time to develop a taste for something, especially if I know I'm eating out. I don't want to fill my mouth with things when I'm trying to develop a taste for my next meal. And then if I'm cooking something, I like the time, that hour space, because once I start to cook, I'm literally developing that taste and I don't want anything messing that up. What I'm kind of like telling you is that you have to develop the taste for positive thinking. You have to develop those things. They don't come easy. They don't come quickly. They come diligently with consistent work and consistently listening, consistently observing yourself and, and really seeing where, you know, your faults lie. And I'm just going to be very frank about it. Like, if you want to change something, it's not going to come easy. But the more you work at it, the easier it will become. And so the first thing you want to do is identify. The second thing that you want to do is find out how you want to change it, which is what we just talked about, making those new habits and gratifying them with a reward and then continuing to do that on a consistent basis. Now, the third thing I want to do is I want to tell you with those self-limiting beliefs, cut the feed. 
every time that you hear even a tad bit of that thought, I want you to cut it. Create a voice in your head that says, shut up. That's not true. I am capable of doing that. You need a voice in there that's fighting for you. And you need a voice that is louder than the other voice, that is stronger than the other voice, that can sit that voice down and just make it shut up. Sometimes you need that. And you need to advocate for yourself. You, the person that you are, you need to advocate for yourself inside your own head. I am capable. I am capable of doing this. I am capable of making great things happen. I am capable of losing weight, you know? And if there's a specific weight that you have, or if there's a specific goal, like if you're trying to not smoke weed, or if you're trying to stop drinking, what is your goal? Is your goal to be one year sober? I am one year sober every single day. I am sober. I am sober. I am one year sober. I am sober for life. Speak it. And so it will be. You have to make yourself believe that it is already true and the rest of you will fall in suit. So honestly, you can't make things, you can't create things without first fixing yourself. Because if you create things, say you create a business or you create something else, any time that you create things, but you have these darkness within yourself, what you're doing is you're embedding that into that baby, into that project, into that thing that you're giving all of your energy to. In order for you to really, for love and light into whatever you do, to make it whatever it is that you want to make it and to feel amazing about it. You really have to do that self-work because honestly, at some point, that self-limiting belief is going to limit you. And truthfully and honestly, doing this work right here and throwing out this garbage right here, you'll be able to see out of that window more clearly and you'll be able to keep it moving. So the next thing would be truly empowering yourself, not just, you know, doing little affirmations. Affirmations are important, but empower yourself. Speak on yourself. Speak positiveness on you. We all praise people that we don't really know. We praise celebrities all the time. Oh my gosh, she's so beautiful. Oh my God, the clothes she wear looks so good. Like, I love her voice. I love that she does A, B, and C. When you pull up Instagram, oh, I love, you know, I love Greece. It's so beautiful. This, this, and that. I love this. I love that. This and that. Like, oh my God, she does this. He does this. Oh my God, he looks so good. This and that. Why you can't say this stuff to yourself? Why you hear me like, damn, my body look good. These nails is fabulous, even though I did it myself. Like, it is amazing. I don't even need to go to the nail shop, girl. You done did that. Like, these eyebrows is bomb. Like, my face is looking good. Like, my body is on point. Like, my clothes is all that. Like, you have to speak on it. You have to speak on yourself before anybody else can. Because honestly, it's not about being conceited. It's about being confident. And it's about having self-respect and self-love. And a lot of us have one or the other or none of them, but we damn sure don't have all of them. So you need to be able to love yourself, to empower yourself, to inspire yourself, to motivate yourself, and still be able to see the flaws that you have and be able to work with it. Because a lot of us have lots and lots of strengths. And we are so blinded by our weaknesses that we focus on them so hard that we can't play to our strengths. We have weaknesses for a reason. We can work on them. We can make them less weak. But at the end of the day, like we play to our strengths and we can find someone else to cover the weak spots. We can find someone else to fill in the gray area. We don't need to be perfect. We just need to be able to perfect ourselves in a way that is humanly possible, okay, and that is empowering. You can empower yourself 
to anything. You can affirm and you can intent and you can manifest best whatever it is that you want to do but you have to be able to climb over the obstacles and you have to be able to motivate yourself and the first thing that you do to get yourself out of a pit is you move the obstacles out of the way so that you can get up so you can climb out of the pit and the first thing that you have to do is believe that it's possible to get out of the pit. And you don't need thoughts while you're climbing out the pit that you'll never get out of here. You don't need to have thoughts like if you grab onto that ledge, it'll just break and we'll fall all the way to the bottom and then we'll have to start over. You don't need thoughts like, oh, that bug there is gonna bite us and we're gonna die. That thing over there is gonna hurt us. You don't need any of those thoughts. And that's the reason you need to take care of these limiting beliefs. Empower yourself. You know, you can do affirmations, but what I'm really telling you, speak on yourself. Listen, what I would do, I like E.T., Eric Thomas, the motivational speaker. I love him. I love listening to him. And when you are feeling like you can't even empower yourself, pull up a video, pull up a motivational video and an inspirational video, something that will speak life into you. And then what you do is you receive, like you receive that and learn from it so you can speak to yourself like that inside your head. I ask myself this every single day, like what is making you get to the point where you don't believe that you can't accomplish whatever it is that you want to accomplish? Why do you think that you can't accomplish that? You are capable of accomplishing and you are way more powerful than you think. I can see how amazing you are, and I can see how capable you are of doing A, B, C, D, of making that happen, of actually making the impact that you want to make. And I will just keep saying stuff like that. And every time I hear a video that's like, you know, why can't you blah, 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 or you can blah, 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 or you will da, 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 da. And I will listen to those things and I will take that stuff in and I will spit it back out to myself every day. Even when I'm feeling down, even when I'm feeling like I can't do anything, I speak as much as I can positivity on myself. I won't say only because I'm not perfect. I speak as much positivity on myself as I possibly can stomach. Like I never speak something that I don't want. If I feel sick, I might say I feel sick, but the only time you'll hear me say it is if I'm really sick and I need help. Like otherwise you will not hear me say I feel good. And it's not me being like, I'm not healthy or anything like that. I just don't want to speak into the present tense that I'm sick, that I'm unwell, that I'm in pain. Because what I'm doing is I'm putting those words out into the universe. I'm manifesting that to come back into my life again, to be more intense than it is now. And I would rather be like, I'm not sick. I'm fine. I'm good. And I can tell someone like, hey, I'm feeling a little under the weather. I can let them know that. I can say it one time, but I'm not going to keep saying it over and over again. I'm not going to keep trying to convince myself because I know internally if I say that I'm well and I'm in the energy of I am well, then my body people like there is research on this. My physical body will then be like, we're supposed to be well. Why aren't we well? Hey, hey. Y'all over there, do what y'all got to do so we can be well. Like the body is always continuously trying to survive. But when you are in a state of belief, if the brain is in belief that we are well, then the body must come to succinct of being well. And honestly, of course, there's more to that. But I mean, shoot, it's a common cold. I don't have cancer. You know what I'm saying? But a lot of those diseases are both mental and physical. And so... You know, you have to be in a mental state of a certain kind to continue that. But I won't speak on that because I've never experienced chronic disease. But I'm just saying that a lot of diseases manifest from not just physical means, but actual emotional and mental means. So if you feel guilt, if you feel continuous grief over years and years of time, if you have systemic trauma that you can't heal from, those things can manifest into illness. And they manifest into illness based on habit loops and your actual feelings. The way that you feel about yourself, if you feel like you're nothing, like 
you would be better off dead. Like those kinds of thoughts create a certain kind of energy frequency. Your body is 75% water. And the things that you intent onto that water in your body creates the environment that is your body. And if anybody has heard the research on water crystals, this guy did research on intent. And when you put intent on water and water from specific places around the world and their frequency, and when he would freeze it, and then he would put it under a microscope and they would form geometric patterns. And when the intent was negative or out of alignment, then the actual crystal would not form and it would be in disarray. And so if you want to look some of that up, I'll try to remember to link it down below. But if I don't, just message me. I will send it to you. And so... It's really just a manifestation of what your energy is. Like we all have auras and we reflect the things around us. And the fact that we have billions of lives that inhabit us, that are inside of us, that feed through osmosis of the water that we put our intent on. Like we need to be more succinct on that. I'm going to move on because I don't want to get too far off topic. So I told you guys about the why. So you can just go down the rabbit hole of why when you're trying to find the name to a specific thought pattern. And then sometimes there are self-deprecating limited beliefs like that you aren't capable or you can't do this or you can't do that. And with that, you can use and. And you say, and I'm going to do it anyway. And I'm going to do it anyway. And I can do it. And like that doesn't mean anything. I'm still doing it. And you can continue to do that almost just at verse, like to counteract or to balance out and then actually following through with the action. The important thing here is that you always follow through with an action after you correct yourself. You follow through with a thought that you corrected. So say, for example, you're going on a date. And your self-limiting belief is like, why are we even going on this date? Like this guy, he's going to see us and he's not going to want to go out with us. He might just drive off. You might actually be a very attractive person or you might be very attractive to this person who asked you out. I mean, duh. And in that clear moment, you can literally just be like, okay, and I'm still going. I'm still going to have an amazing time and it's going to be great. And yes, there is a possibility that things can go wrong. But at the end of the day, didn't you put yourself out there for something to go right? And you just really have to talk yourself up. You really have to speak to yourself in such a way that anything is possible. Even if you right now don't believe that it's possible, the more that you speak on it, the more that you use those words, because words are spells. Words are entrapments. And when you say anything is possible, what you're doing is you're aligning yourself on a path of anything that I want. Anything that I would like to align to can happen with me. I am aligned with it and I can make it happen. And when you say things like that to yourself, you are becoming in alignment with it. So if you're saying, oh, uh, I'm a pothead, you know what I'm saying? If you're aligning yourself to that type of thinking, like you won't elevate past that. You'll just stay at a head level. You'll keep spending every free dollar that you have on smoking when you really could be minimizing that and you could be investing to create more passive income or to save up to get a car or a house, something of value that will increase your worth. And so what I would say is if you believe that you're an alcoholic, I mean, it's good to acknowledge that you have a problem. But after a certain point, when you're trying to change who you are, you have to start saying it to yourself like, I am cured. I no longer have the need for alcohol. I no longer have tastes for alcohol. I no longer have the yearn for the feeling. I no longer want that in my life. Things like that, like being able to speak upon what you want to happen and creating those positive habit loops and those positive thought patterns to continue to circulate will help you move forward in your life.
Okay, and the last one I want to talk about is thoughts from others. So this one is a little bit tough because you can't control other people's thoughts. But what you can control is when other people project who they think that you are onto yourself. People do it all the time. I have a resting bitch face. So a lot of people on meeting me, like without speaking to me or acknowledging me in any way, just seeing me think that I'm a mean person. When actually I'm probably the nicest, most sociable person you could meet. The thing is, is that people have their perceptions of you. And sometimes, especially people close to you, will let you know their perceptions of you as if they are true because they, in quote, know you, right? They know you and they know that you're going to do A, B, and C. But when you're trying to become the person that you know that you're meant to be, when you're trying to get out of these negative habit loops and actually raise your vibration to someone who does not entertain the things that you used to because you want to stay positive, you want to stay at a certain level, these people can get so irritating and they also can trigger your old habit loops. They also can trigger old habits that you have seemingly worked so hard to get rid of or worked so hard to get them in a lower loop rotation. You have to be able to sustain what you are trying to do without being influenced by these other people. I used to get to a point where I would just argue, but at this point in my life, I've just realized that I have to show people who I am. And in that way, the only thing that you can say to them is, okay. And you know the okay I mean, like that. Mm-hmm, okay. Those things right there, as soon as you hear the form of that coming out of their mouth, I feel like you automatically need to tune that out. You automatically need to put that wall of soaking up energy and just put that thing up like, mm-mm, that's not coming in here. Because those things, you don't need that. And you don't need to think about what other people's perception of you is. Because we don't care. You don't need to care. Because what you need right now is to know what you think about you. And if you're worried about what everyone else thinks about you, then when it comes to a disappointment that they think something other than what you wanted them to think, then that's what you'll start thinking about yourself. And so what I'm saying right now is fuck them. Yeah, I said it. Fuck them. Because who cares what they think? Honestly, who cares? Who are they? They're nobody. They're not me. They not the divine. Honestly, truthfully, those are only two people that matter. And one of them is not even a person. Let's just be real. Everyone has their self-limiting beliefs. Everyone has their own messed up thought forms that they're working on or not working on. Then those people come to you and they speak those same kinds of words that they hear inside their own head. And they put them into your head because they think that there's nothing wrong with that. And that is where the problem lies, is that you allow it to enter your own head. You allow those things to simmer inside of you. And at a certain point, either you're going to have to dilute how much you're being around this person or completely cut them off in some instances, depending on how toxic this person may be. But in majority of ways, you just have to be loving and understanding of where this person is in their journey right now and understand that they are not capable right now of understanding how powerful, how empowered, how inspirational, how capable and worthy and loving that you are. And they are not at a point to know how much of that is within them. And the only way that they will know is if you show them how powerful and capable and all of those things that you are, and they can start to see in themselves that they might be better than what they think what their habaloops may say. And I encourage you to evaluate your friend circle and see who is really there for your empowerment, who is really there to grow with you, and who is there to tear you down and you are just their entertainment. So I only say that just because honestly and truthfully, people are very quick to hurt people 
in order to be entertained. And if you have someone around you that is willing to hurt you on a continuous basis to be entertained by you, I encourage you to let that person go. And if that person is part of your family, I understand. And you would just have to make as minimal contact as you possibly can. It doesn't mean you have to cut them completely off, but keep away from them until you can heal yourself enough where being around them is a little bit easier and you're able to let their comments slide off your back, especially if it's person is narcissistic because that can be self-deprecating like all in itself. That person is toxic and they're embedding toxicity within you and it's hard to get that kind of toxicity out. I had a couple of things to help you guys improve your vibration while you're impacting these habits. So the first one is to cleanse your space cleanse yourself ASAP. Like every single day when you wake up in the morning and right before you go to sleep at night, you need to cleanse. Buy a bundle of sage or get you a Palo Santo stick. They usually come in packs of five. Burn it and wave the smoke around you and let it clear out your aura, clear out your energy, get all that negativity off of you. And then at least once a week, if not every day, sage your house. I do like a ritual sage every few months, but every day that I wake up and I don't, I try my best to Palo Santo because I use Palo Santo because sage is a little bit too messy. I Palo Santo my entire space. Anywhere that I know that I'm going to be for the most of the day, I Palo Santo the entire room. I am Palo Santo the kitchen. I Palo Santo my room and my daughter's room and all the way through the house. And then once a week, I do my partner's work area just to make sure that there are no negative energies lingering in my home and that they're able to clear away so that we can actually facilitate a high energy within our home. Also to facilitate a high energy within yourself, because if you're able to cleanse, it's just the same as bringing outside dirt into your house. When you bring that outside dirt into your home and you lay in your bed with it, then there's all kinds of germs from wherever you've been all day in your bed versus if you take a shower. And so if you're thinking about the way that your energy field is the same way. It gets dirty the same way. And so you need that Palo Santo, that sage, that cleansing to clear things out, clear out your energy, clear out your space, and to really make you feel secure within your vibration and your consistent vibration. Now, there is also a thing called a lemon corner. Now, this is something that I learned when I was in college. And there's a specific shop that I love called La Fruta in Atlanta. And it's like a small little quaint shop. And they make these fruit bowls. Oh my God, they're amazing. And they do sandwiches and soups in the winter. And a lot of their stuff is vegan or just clean eating. It's just so good. Like, Everything there is just so well thought through. They had these lemons in the corner and as a sign that says, don't touch. <laughs> It says, don't touch. This is a power lemon or something like that. And so what they do is they cleanse a lemon and then they stick it in the corner. And so lemons are known to absorb negative energy. For example, if your lemon goes bad, like rots and grows mold like usually lemons, if they're in a place with good energy, they'll shrink and then they'll get to the point where they become hard and then they'll start to kind of decay, but they'll get really hard and preserved. But if there's negative energy, they'll rot like an apple and get like actual mold growing on top and decay. And, you know, sometimes lemons do that and they don't, they're not old. It's just the energy is so bad and it's absorbing negative energy in your home that it just dies. It just rots. Having lemons in your home is very important and they clean out the space. I keep a lemon in my altar and I always keep a bag of lemons in the house. One, because I love tea. If there is anyone out there listening to this podcast and you have tea and you would like to send me some tea or... If you would like to put your sponsoring on this podcast, I would love to have your sponsorship because I truly love tea, okay? I have lemons because I love. 
So like I said earlier, like speaking intently and speaking highly of yourself and the things that you want. And I say that because like, you know, there's some times where we're not getting what we want and we're struggling. And of course, we need to open up to someone. But I'm saying on a regular basis throughout your day, speaking highly of it, speaking on it, speaking in it and around you. If you really want to become a CEO of a company that you work for or a CFO, speak on it. I am the CFO of such and such company and speak highly of it. Never speak speak lowly of your place of being. Never speak lowly of what you want in your life. Like you can't say, oh, it's so hard to become CFO because if you say that, then it's going to become harder for you to get it. You need to be like, it's easy to get there. And what I don't know about being CFO, the knowledge will come to me in the time that I need it to become CFO of said company. Anything that I don't know will come. The knowledge and experience will come and I will become CFO of said company. And you just have to keep speaking highly on it or I'm opening my own business. My business will be lucrative. My business will serve a purpose in someone's life and people will gravitate toward my product and or service. You have to speak on it as if it is real, as if you are already in it and you are managing that said successful business. And so speak highly of what you want. Speak highly of the people that you love and speak highly of yourself in order to get the environment, the support system, and the things that you want. And that will help you sustain a high vibration because what you're doing is you're creating an environment of high vibration. I also, this is not on my list, but I think it is important that if you have a lot of electronics in your home, electronics can dim down the vibration of your home and of you. If you are consistently on a computer, a laptop, you have electronics on like a watch, Get shungite. It is a crystal and this crystal helps to transmute negative energies from EMF waves in your home to positive energy that is good for you. I try to make sure to link it below so that you're able to, you know, look more into it and maybe get some for yourself. And shungite is really amazing because you can wear it and you can sit it next to certain items that will help transmute that energy. Also, there are pyramids and items that are called organ energy pyramids. Also, organ energy organites, that's what they call it. Organites is actually a man-made pyramid or stone or talisman, depending on what form you buy it in. And what it consists of is conductive and non-conductive materials. Usually it would be crystals with aluminum or some type of high quality metal that would transmute energies. And then they have like some natural fibers inside as well. And so what that does is the natural fibers layer with the transmuted and the energy source when energy pieces are in a specific environment, it will change those negative energies into positive energies and it will sustain a certain vibration within its auric field. And so a lot of those kinds of materials usually have a lot of crystals. I won't say like a large amount of crystals depending on what size you get, but you do get a consistent amount of crystals in it. And then those energy puts off just kind of magnify everything. Plus they usually have copper in it. And so copper magnifies crystal energies that creates a certain type of aura. And then with those natural fibers, the energy enters and comes out positive. But if you want to sustain something like that, you can get a pendant that is organite or look up organ energy. You can create your own. It's pretty much super simple. And you use this liquid that you would pour in and you put all the crystals and you layer everything and then it would set a certain way in the mold and then you would just take it out and then you have it there and they have rods they have the rod pyramids that you could put over your bed at night if you're just like super into stuff like that but there is just so many things that you can use that would help changing negative energy into positive energy 
And just for good luck for those of you who have a home that there's a lot of arguing, you can get bamboo in Chinese tradition. Three sticks of bamboo growing in a home will promote happiness, balance, and love. My last little thing about having your vibration high, take action on those intentions. No matter how small that action may be, if you take at least one action every day on your intention, whether that's I'm going to love myself more or I'm going to do this more or I want to create a business or I want to move at a certain pace or I want to lose weight, doing at least one thing every day and speaking highly on it will get you in the right mindset because eventually one thing won't be enough for you. It'll be two and then three and then four. And then eventually you'll get to the point where you can't stop working on it, where it consumes you in a way. And so you will then have to figure out how to balance it out because you'll be so passionate and it'll become something very important to you. And so be careful what you speak on and make sure that you commit to taking actions. Because once you start to take actions on a consistent basis, it will be very hard for you to stop. And that's what we want, to get to a point where it's easy to take the actions that used to be hard, that could get us where we need to be, and that can take us to our goals and aspirations. I also wanted to add a couple of things. Crystals help with keeping your vibration high. Depending on which goal you have, there should be a different crystal to align with that. I also would say for those of you who are wanting to have more prosperity, I would either get a $100 bill if you can spare it and just leave the $100 bill in your wallet. Don't spend it. Always have it in your wallet because what that's going to do is you're attracting that $100 into your wallet. And if you can get prosperity bills, which are also available, I think you can get them on Amazon. A lot of metaphysical stores sell them and it's a $100 bill. It's usually gold plated or something like that. And you keep it in your wallet. And what that does is it's attracting prosperity to you, to your wallet, to, um, you know, your bank account, if your bank cards are in your wallet, attract those things to you. Also about money, when you're giving money away, make sure that you are giving money away with your, you have a receiving hand and then you have a... I guess you would call it like a relinquishing hand. And I believe that is your non-dominant hand, but it should be your left hand. Like usually your left hand is the hand that you would give money away and you would receive money from your right hand so that you are consistently receiving and giving in a circle versus one way. That's something to think about. Also keeping all of your bills the same way, it will continue to bring money to you. And if your money is in disarray, then so with your money. So these are just little things that I thought would be cool to add because of course, like my dad taught them to me. So why not teach them to you guys? And then I also would say, honestly, be careful what you consume, whether that's content or music, listen to the lyrics of the music that you listen to. And depending on what mood you would like to be on, make sure that your music that you listen to are resonating at the frequency that you would like to be at, okay? Also, think about the videos that you watch, the media that you consume, and very truthfully, the water that you drink, okay? Like, if you're drinking tap, I don't know what to say to you. Like, don't drink that. Just don't, okay? Like, alkaline water is now available in stores by the gallon. You can also get it in large five-gallon jugs. Drink the purest water that you can afford. If you're drinking tap, make sure that you get a kettle. I have an electric kettle and boil your water before you drink it and try to get as much of the chemicals, pesticides, as much of what you can out of your drinking water because that affects your mental. It affects your pineal gland, which controls your melatonin and your serotonin, which affects how good you sleep and how well you wake. OK, because that affects your energy levels as well as different hormones in the body. Honestly, like. 
water affects your entire body because those chemicals, especially the lime in water, it literally affects your body to a certain point where you can start having that residue. Because, you know, you have filtering organs and that residue is either coming out through pee or it's still in your body. And your body doesn't know what to do with that stuff. A lot of that stuff is toxic. Lead is in water. Fluoride in high concentrations is in water. Chlorine, large deposits of magnesium. Also in the 1970s, 50s, and in the 1980s, doctors were encouraging patients to flush old prescription pills down the toilet so that their kids wouldn't get into it and like get addicted to their prescription pills or they just knew that they would be good. The only problem with that is that now that stuff is in our water and we don't have the kind of filtration system to filter out a lot of our impurities in public water. A lot of public water really isn't up to drinking standard, but it's close enough, in quotes, that the state or the government doesn't make a big deal about it, uh, you know, for those people who live in Flint. But everywhere else around the country, like water is bad. Like Atlanta, Atlanta had some something happen with their water and they were able to clean it up a bit to where people couldn't notice. But if you look at the articles, a lot of those articles say it would take up to five years for that water to even get back to what it was before. There are a lot of things wrong with our tap drinking water. Just in general, like, Drink as clean as you can, buy what you can. If you want to make it sustainable, find a place that will refill your water for you. And that's a lot cheaper than buying the jug every single time where you can just go and refill the waters that you have. And I will also say add lemon to your water. Lemon raises the pH and absorb water as well as it activates the digestive system. So it's really good to drink water first thing in the morning. So these are the tips for throwing out limiting beliefs and raising your vibration to get and manifest the things that you want and the life that you want. I love you guys. I'm so glad that you came back to my fourth episode. Y'all, I'm getting better at this. I am so thankful for you guys. I am thankful for you being here, being alive, being who you are, where you are at this time. And I'm glad and I hope that you take something away from this podcast because that's what I'm here for. I want to pour love and light into you. I want to pour vibrations that you get the most positive and loving things coming into your life that you, I pray prosperity onto you. And I so much, so much. I am so grateful to you guys for coming back to my podcast. Thank you for listening to Healing Roots. And I cannot wait to get back to you guys next week. I hope your week is freaking amazing. Okay. And please take these things into consideration and, you know, really implement these things into your life because there is so much greater. Life is so much greater when there's not a mean person yelling at you in your head. I love you guys. Be well. Thank you for listening to the Healing Roots podcast. And I can't wait to hear from you. I can't wait to talk to you guys next week. Please, if you can, follow me on Instagram at live like low. And it's just one word, L-I-V-E, like, L-I-K-E, low, L-O, on IG. And my YouTube is also Live Like Low, where I will be posting consistent content every week on the same topics. And if you're interested, please come see my beautiful face. Leave comments, you know, talk to me, guys. Tell me what you want to see, okay? And if you would like to contact me, just email me at Ask live like low at gmail.com. And I cannot wait to speak to you guys.